mafunzo yetu ya toka katika kitabu cha Zaburi 121 hadi 121 kuja small topic or whatever that you want ahead you wako unataka kuweka kitu kidogo chochote kinachoje ungependa kuweka you can just write my help comes from the lord unaweza tu kuandika pale msaada wangu unatoka kwa bwana you know in life there is a lot of challenges that we normally encounter as human beings unajua kwamba katika maisha tunayo changamoto ambayo huwa tunakumbana nayo sometimes we expect things to go to a specific direction but it goes to a contrary direction Sometimes when you look around you are looking for someone who can be going to come in as a source of remedy to you but you don't find even one single person. Watu mwingine unatazamia kwamba mtu anaweza kuja kwako kama msaada kwako lakini unakosa kupata hata mtu mmoja. Especially in a time like this aswa wakati kama huu in this land of kenya whereby we, we, we people normally say if you don't have someone to hold your hand you cannot be able to succeed in life ama katika taifa hili kenya nasema kwamba hiwapo hautakuwa na mtu wa kukushika mkono katika taifa hili basi hautaweza kufaulu katika maisha whereby it has brought a lot of fear to very many people ambapo imeweza kuleta hofu mwingi sana kwa watu wengi whereby people when they look at their life they wonder who will be able to hold my hand so that i can be able to rise up to a place of success kiwango cha watu kuweza kujiuliza msana kusema kwamba ni nani atakayeweza kunishika mkono ili nikaweze kuinuka katika kiwango hiki cha maisha and sometimes because of that kind of notion people have gone even to a level whereby even some of us have been taken advantage of by some of these people that we thought they would be able to help us hata inaweza kufika kiwango hicho kwa wakati kwa watu wengine wameweza kuchukua ile manufaa kwetu sisi ili kwamba tukaweze kufikia mahali ambapo tunataka maybe you expected that they would be able to bring a solution to your life but in, instead they were able to they were able to bring damages and confusion and even pain to our individual lives labda ulijali ulidhani kwamba ataweza kuleta suluhisho katika maisha yako lakini badala yake ameweza kuleta uharibifu katika maisha yako and possibly you start thinking god have you forsaken me na hasta unafika kiwango cha kuweza kufikiria kusema kwamba mungu je umeniacha or maybe you are asking yourself a lot of questions am i living under curse ama unafika mahali hata kwa kujiuliza maswali mengi je ninaishi chini ya laana or maybe someone has bewitched me ama labda mtu ameweza kuniroga or maybe i am born with bad omen bad luck ama nimeweza kusadiwa na bahati mbaya so you wonder what is happening na unashangaa nini nafanya where will i run to ni wapi nitakapo kimbilia maybe there is someone that you are looking at and you read to them and they turn their eyes against you labda kuna mtu ambao ulikuwa unatazamia na ukamkimbilia naye hakuweza kukusaidia and you got this courage that you said how how will i make it in life na ukashushika sana na ukasema kwamba je nitawezaje katika maisha yangu maybe you went to someone and they demand that they ask you to be able to to deliver to them for them to help you it was too much that you cannot bear ama uliweza kumkimbilia mtu na yale matoko ambayo yalikupa yalikuwa makubwa sana hata ungeweza or maybe people disappointed you in different versions in different ways ama watu waliweza kukushusha katika njia tofauti and maybe a lot of real weariness a lot of fainting and discouragement as caught now we has caught you up na ile hali ya kushushika ikaweza kukushika and now you are wondering lakini sana sasa unashangaa this morning i am here to encourage you Asubuya leo niko maana hapa kuweza kukuimiza. Psalms chapter 121. Kutoka katika kitabu cha Zaburi 121. Do a very brief study in Psalms chapter number 121. Waweza kufanya mafunzo mafupi katika kitabu hiki cha Zaburi 121. And I believe by the end of our service nami naamini kwamba mwisho wa ibada yetu you are going to leave this place as an encouraged person unaweza kuondoka mahala hapo ukiwa mtu ambaye umeimizika and this was a very good song because it was a song of assets hii ilikuwa na wimbo ulio mzuri or the song of visions depending on how we pronounce it jinsi ambavyo mwenyewe unaweza kuichukua and the bible says in verse number 1 biblia inasema katika mstari wa kwanza song psalms number 1 Saburi ni moja ni shiri na moja na wa kwanza I will lift up my eyes to the hills Nitainua macho yako nitazame milimani From where does my help come Msaada wangu utatoka wapi And he responded my help comes from the Lord Naye akaweza kuitikia na kusema kwa msaada wangu huu katika Bwana Who made heaven and earth Aliyezifanya mbingu na nji So today maybe you are asking yourself Labda siku ya leo unajiuliza 
Where will my help come from? But today I just want to provoke you and encourage you. Lakini siki ya leo nataka kukuchochea na kukuibika. That always come to a level where you lift up your eyes towards the Lord of heaven. Ya kwamba wewe fika ile kiwango cha kwa wewe kuweza kuinua macho yako juu kwa Bwana wa mbinguni. Because he's the only one who is just and faithful to give to us even without demands. Maana yeye peke yake ndio mwaminifu ambaye anatupa sisi hata pasipo matako yake. He's the one who can be able to be sent to us without taking advantage of us or even disappointing us in one way or the other. Yeye ndio yule tu ambaye anaweza kutuhudumia na hata bila kuchukua manufaa kwetu. And let me tell you when you lift up your eyes to the Lord. Na wacha nikakuambia unapoinua macho yako kwa When you cry to him and when you seek him in prayer. Unapomlilia na unamtafuta katika maombi. Or maybe when you rise up and go towards this holy hill or his holy mountain. Unapoinuka na kuendea mlima wake mtakatifu. And saying I am lifting up my eyes to you Lord so that you can minister to me. Na kusema kwamba ninakuinulia macho yako eh Bwana ili ukaweze kurudukia. He is a faithful God that will always remember the covenant that he was able to make with his people once they made a their relations right with him. Na yeye ni Mungu ambaye anaweza kukumbuka yale maagano ambayo aliweza kufanya na watu wake wakati ambapo mmeweza kufanya tendo hilo kwa Mungu. say my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and the earth. Msaburi akasema kwamba msaada wangu utachoka kwa Bwana aliyefanya mbingu na nje. The one that we normally learn of whereby the Bible says he owns the earth and its fullness. Yule ambao unamkimbilia anasema kwamba anasema kwamba yeye anamiliki ardhi na mbingu. The one that we normally say that the heavens is his throne and the earth is his footstool. Yule ambaye anasema kwamba mbingu ndio enzi yake na dunia ni maana maana pa kiti chake. That is the one that we can always run to when we are in need, when we are in desperation, when we are hurting and be able to pray, pray and provide solutions. Huyo ni mtu tu ambaye tunaweza kumkimbilia kwake wakati ambapo tuko na shida na akaweza kuleta solution. And let me tell you something. Na wacha niwaambie kitu. The Bible warns of warns us of an extent of fasting or putting our trust in men. Biblia inatuona ile kiwango cha kuweza kuweka matumaini wetu kwa wanadamu. Why because when you put your trust in men you receive curses. Kwa nini kwa sababu unapoweka matumaini yako kwa mwanadamu basi wewe unapokea laana. Why because trust is a man that puts his trust on a fellow man or fellow flesh and blood. Maana amelainua yule mtu ambaye anamtegemea mwanadamu. Maybe some of us have tried people have tried to look for ways and solutions on how we can be able to help ourselves or be able to bring solutions or maybe our lives to be delivered from men and who are disappointed. Labda baadhi yetu tumejaribu kutafuta watu ama wanadamu ambao wanaweza kutupa suluhu lakini tumeweza kushushika. Maybe by the end of it all you received more mockeries and even disappointments and even they talked about you very evil statements. Labda hatimaye wameweza kukushusha na hata kuweza kutoa kauli mbaya juu yako. And there was a great pain in your heart. Na kulikuwa na uchungu ndani ya moyo wako. I am here to encourage you that there is no need for you to put your trust in men. Nami niko mahala hapa kukuhimiza kwamba hapana hitaji na wewe kuweza kupea kuweka matumaini yako na Mungu. And I've always over the years have come to learn that if God does not tie the heart of a man to assist you, they cannot assist you. Na kiki kwenda kwa muda mrefu nimeweza kufahamu kwamba iwapo Mungu hajeguza moyo wa mwanadamu uweze kukusaidia hawezi kukusaidia you can do everything within your own capacity to make them help you but they cannot help you unless God touches them unaweza kufanya kila jambo bidii katika kiwango chako kuwafanya wakusaidie lakini hawezi kukusaidia and God does not mind he can touch the wicked and both the wicked and the righteous to be able to minister to you if he wants to minister to you whatsoever na Mungu hajali anaweza kukuza walio wema walio wovu akaweze kukusaidia iwapo anataka kukusaidia Why? Because if you put your trust and your hope and your confidence when you seek him and you lift up your eyes towards him, he will always be there to minister to you. Wapo utaweka ujasiri kwake, tumaini yake kwake, basi yeye uko maana pale ataweza kukusaidia. The Bible says he will not let your foot be moved. You can just see the person. Biblia inasema kwamba hataweza kuruhusu mguu wako kusongeshwa. He will not let your foot to be moved. Hata ruhusu mguu wako kusongeshwa. When you are talking about your foot being moved, you are talking about you will not allow it to be destabilized. 
In simple language, when you continue to lift up your eyes towards him, when you seek him, when you always run to him, he will always provide the grace of stability in your individual life. Even if you are passing through a tough state or a tough situation in your life, Hata, you are still stable. Why? Because you have God with you. Hata kama jambo, yako, mama, magumu yako, Mungu pale and neither will the enemy take an advantage of you or destabilize you in any way whatsoever or remove you from your intended position that God had designed for you. Wala hadui hata weza kunafaika na wewe ama kuweza kuondoa yale makusudi ambayo Mungu alikukusudia wewe. The Bible says he who keeps you will not slumber. Sema kwamba yeye akulindaye hata lala. He does not sleep at any way or at any time whatsoever. Yeye hanali unawala hata lala wakati au wakati yote ile. Sometimes when we put our trust and our hope in people, they can sleep and we will not be able to get solutions. Wakati to what we desire. Wakati mwingine tunapoweka matumaini yetu kwa wanadamu wataweza kulala na hata waweza kupata suluhu ambayo tunahitaji. Or when you talk about slumbering or when you talk about sleeping, we are actually talking about that sense or that place whereby we are totally forgotten and we are no longer thinking about us or doing anything that is able to bring solutions. Na kusema kulala wala kusinzia na maanisha kwamba wakati mwingine wanasahau hata yale mambo na kuweza kutoweza kuleta solution. Or even if you put your trust in other gods, there is a time that they will be able to slumber or they will be able to, to not to provide the, the, the kind of solution that you need at that specific time. Hata wakati mwingine unapoweka tumaini yako miongo mingine zinaweza kulala na hata kutoweza kuleta suluhu bila ambao unahitaji. That's why during COVID-19 we go to learn a lot of lessons especially in those sites of India. They try to do everything with their idols but nothing was happening. Diposa hata katika ile wakati wa janga la corona tuliweza kujifunza mambo kutoka katika taifa la India maana walijaribu kufanya mambo mengi kwa ile miungu yao lakini haikuweza kuwasaidia. For long generations for many years for for, for many centuries centuries they have been trusting in idols and, and, and even those kind of gods. Kwa muda, kwa muda mwingi kwa miongo mingi wamekuwa wakitumainia miungu hizo they have been trusting in those gods and even they think that the wealth that they possess it is from those gods wamekuwa wakitumainia miungu hizo na hata kudhani ya kwamba zile mali ambazo wanamiliki zinatoka kwa miungu hizo all things that have been happening to their lives to their to their individual lives they have been thinking that it has been as a result of their worship towards those idols. Mambo mazuri ambayo yamekuwa yakifanyika katika maisha yao wamedhani kwamba imetokana na wao kuabudu miungu hizo. Not knowing that the God of heaven and earth allows rain to pour both to the righteous and even to the unrighteous. Bila kujua kwamba Mungu muumba wa mbingu na nchi yeye huruhusu mvua yake kunyea kwa wale walio wovu na walio wema. And possibly they are just beneficiaries of the blessings of God not because they are righteous but just because our God pours the rain upon the righteous and the wicked. Na wao wamenufaikia tu ile uhako wa Mwenyezi Mungu maana yeye ananyea mvua yake kwa walio wema na walio wovu. Yes, in their ignorance, maybe they might have given those praises to those idols. But it is something that was done with the God of heaven and the God of the earth. So it did not provide solution to them at that specific time. And they were able to throw those idols on the streets. Because maybe possibly they, they, they got angry and they thought maybe they are gods are slumbering or sleeping. But those who, for those who got the revelation they were able to start seeking the true most high God. And the Bible says behold he who gives Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. There is a time that I was talking about concerning the biological nation of Israel. And there is a time that I was trying to join the nation of Israel and even we Gentiles who are 
made heirs through the grace of, of God. Uh, so when we talk about the nation of Israel, we are actually talking about the nation that is set apart. Or a people that we, who are just set apart for the purposes and the will of God. So our God cannot sleep nor slumber. So it's the most perfect one that we need to depend upon and trust every single day of our life. That's why we need to stick to him at all times in regardless of what we are going through. Verse number five, the Bible says the Lord is your keeper. Stari watano unasema kwa mwana ndiye ulinzi wako. I'm doing it in an expo, expo sitori mana. Naifana katika njia hiyo. Just because of our time today. Kwa sababu ya saa. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shape on your right hand. Bwana ndiye ulinzi wako. Bwana ni uvuli wako wa kuume. So at the beginning the Bible says I will lift up my eyes. To the hills of God, where my help comes from. So when you do that, when you lift up your eyes towards the Lord and seek Him in prayer, and seek Him at all times in whichever situations that you are in, in your home, in your workplace, in your schooling, in, in wherever you are. At all times. There are things that will come along that. Whereby the Bible says the Lord is your keeper, the Lord is your shade on the right on your right hand. Maana Bible Bible says that the Lord is your keeper, the Lord is your shade. Every single time when you study the Bible and you study about the right hand. Kila wakati unapo jifunza kutoka kwa Biblia na una 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 jifunza kuhusu mkono wa kume. Maybe the right hand of God. It's basically it is talking about our positions of authority. Labda mkono wa kume wa Mungu inaongelea kuhusu sehemu yetu ile ya mamlaka. Or our positions for the will of God. Ama nafasi yetu wa mapenzi ya Mungu. Or the positions whereby God has designed for individual lives. Ama ile nafasi ambayo Mungu ameweza kuitenga kwa maisha ya mtu binafsi. And also the second one. Na hata pia ya pili. When it talks about the right hand here. Inapoongelea kuhusu mkono wa kuume hapa. It is actually talking about a, a place of need at your place of need or at, 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 at your times of need. Inasema kuhusu ile wakati wako wa hitaji. So when it talks about the Lord is your shed. It is actually talking about the grace of comfort. For example, when it is shiny, when it is too hot. And maybe you look for yourself a place. Na wewe unajitafutia sehemu chini ya mti. Wewe you can be able to get comfort, wewe you can be able to rest without being hurt by the sun. Maana ambapo unaweza kustarehe na kukosa kuweza kumulikwa na jua. That is where we can say the shade of a tree. Hapo ndipo tunaweza kusema kwamba ile uvuli ama kivuli cha mti. So when the Lord says or the Bible says shade on your right hand it is actually talking about the Lord bringing comfort at your place of need. That's why there are people who are coming from places where the conditions are very tough. Kwa sababu hiyo kuna watu ambao wanatoka mahali ambapo hali ni ngumu sana. Most likely from those guys who come from western countries. Aswa kwa wale ambao wametoka katika mataifa ya magharibi. There is someone that I, 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 was, I was talking to. Kuna mtu ambaye nilikuwa ninaongea naye and she is in Finland. Na yeye yuko katika nchi ya Finland. She was telling how cold that country is. Alikuwa akisema jinsi inji hiyo ilivyo baridi. How geographical conditions and how the weather and the conditions of that land, how cold it is. Jinsi maeneo ya inji hiyo ama hali ya inji hiyo ilivyo baridi. Yes it might be considered as a land of opportunities in the natural. Ndio inaweza kuonekana kwamba ni nafasi ni inji yenye nafasi nyingi. But natural conditions are not very encouraging. 
lakini maswa hali ya anga katika inji hiyo aitimu wewe but here the lord is saying it does not matter whether you are even in, in non encouraging conditions the lord will still provide comfort solution and help to you as long as you continue to lift up your eyes towards him na hapo mimi nasema kwamba haijalishi hata kama uko katika moja wapo ya sehemu ambayo ni mbaya Mungu ataweza kuleta ile hali ya kustarehe. Verse number 7 the Bible says the Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. Sarwa sawa nasema kwamba Bwana atakulinda na mabaya yote, atakulinda nafsi yako. And it is very important that all of us we are living on the face of the earth and, and conditions here on earth are not good. And vema kwamba sisi zote tunaishi katika uso wa inji na hali hapa sio nzuri. And uh, many people are planning to hurt you to destroy your life they are against you the enemy is against you in one way or another watu wengi wanapanga kuweza kudhuru maisha yako haleluya wanapanga kukushambulia katika njia moja ama nyingine and some of you might think that you might not have enemies but basically you have enemies in your lives na baadhi yenu unaweza kudhani kwamba hamna adui katika maisha lakini lazima ni lazima uwe na adui katika maisha maybe you have not seen the pitch of those pains those enemies why because the lord is comforting you the lord has protected you and preserved you or maybe the lord is fighting your battles maybe the lord has driven away the enemies that are always coming against your life he always fights your battles and drives them away from you to an extent wherever you are relaxed and you think that maybe i don't have enemies in life kwa kiwango cha kwamba unafika mahali pa kusaleka na kusema kwamba ha mimi sina maadui katika maisha it is not only the great or the rich who have enemies even those who are in need they have enemies sio wale wakuu hata matajiri bali hata wale wako katika ile itaji how many of you have seen both the poor and the rich being killed je ni baadhi yenu ni baadhi ya wangapi wenye maana wote matajiri na maskini wakiwawa and there is no explanation to that na hapana maelezo kuhusiana na hayo how many of you have seen both the rich rich and the poor encountering different types of challenges je ni baadhi yenu wangapi wenye maana baadhi ya hao matajiri na maskini wakikumbana na na mama magumu so none of us is an exception of the evil of the enemy kwa hivyo hapana mmoja wetu ambaye ametengwa na uovu adui but we may just be safe we may just be comfortable why because the lord is on our side lakini unaweza kuwa tu salama unaweza tu kustarehe kwa sababu bwana yu upande wetu but even if you have encountered those challenges directly and they have been able to bring pain to you the bible says that the lord will be able to keep you from all those forms of evil lakini hata kama umeweza kukumbana na changamoto hizo lazimaweza kuleta uchungu katika maisha yako bwana ataweza kukusaidia and the bible says he will go up he will end up to an of even keeping your life safe na hata Biblia inasema kwamba atafika kiwango cha kuweza hata kuhifadhi maisha yako. And the Bible says but number 8 the Lord will keep you going out and you are coming in. Na Biblia inaendelea kusema katika mstari wa saba wa nane kwamba Bwana atakulinda utokapo na uingiapo from this time forth and forevermore. Tangu sasa na hata milele. So and I get from the psalmist here that once you learn to depend upon the Lord all the time and seek his face and call upon his name and, and also run to him for refuge he will always be there for you kwa wakati wote ambao utafuta uso wake na kuweza kumkimbilia yeye kwa ajili ya msaada yeye ataweza kukimbilia and the bible says he will bless you are coming in and bless you are going out he will always be there at all instances in life in all situations wherever you are wherever you go yeye anasema kwamba yeye atakuwa pamoja na wewe unapoondoka na unaporejea katika hali yote ile and he gives this assurance to his children that he will be there from this time and even forevermore once you get that revelation that i will always depend upon the lord 